Alright guys, my name is Metagoblin and today I'm going to be counting down the top 10 rogue tricks for Classic WoW. Just before we jump in guys, please do give me a quick follow on Twitch when you catch any of my live streams. If you end up liking the video, please do consider liking the video and subscribing to the channel for more content like this video. But anyway, let's jump in. So the first trick we're going to cover is gouge kiting. I've talked about this previously on the channel. It's a trick that basically is really useful for taking down elite or any difficult mobs while you're leveling and even at, you know, level 60. If you do this trick correctly, you are pretty much immortal, you are very tanky and basically indestructible, but only if you do the trick correctly. It does require a lot of patience and skill and definitely a little bit of practice, but nonetheless, it is a very useful tip. I've used this while leveling to, to, you know, diff to basically do really difficult group quests on my own. So anyway, I'm going to like imagine as if I'm trying to take down this elite and it's a very difficult elite to take down. You probably do want to open with cheap shot. You want to keep crippling poison on your main hand. So a typical open obviously is like you open with cheap shot, do a little bit of damage. And what you're going to do, as soon as the mob comes out of combat, you're going to press gouge. Okay, and then you're just going to start running. You wait for Crippling Poison to get onto the target, and then in between the target and melee range, you're going to fit in like melee attacks, whatever, sorry, range attacks that you have, go back into a gouge, and again, just keep kiting, and you just basically constantly kiting with the gouge, fitting in ranged attacks, and then when you're on max combo points, it's best to like kidney shot, go behind the target, do a little damage, and then save energy for you to basically repeat the process and gouge the gouge miss it is difficult when the gouge misses and um, this is when you probably have to start popping different cooldowns like blind it is really unfortunate when gouge misses and that does make it a little bit more difficult but nonetheless i think you get the idea so the next trick we're going to be talking about is the cheap shot into gouge trick so when you're dealing with mages and orcs stuns are not going to be well stuns are going to let you down first of all mages can just blink out of stuns so that's really irritating. And let's be honest, orcs pretty much have a stun immunity. I've just never been able to stun a, an orc. I can't even remember stunning an, stunning an orc, to be honest. So what I'd recommend is putting cheap shot. Say, for instance, uh, I have cheap shot on the keybinders free. Okay, that's my mouse button, by the way, not actually on the keyboard. So I spam free to use cheap, cheap shot. But I also have out of stealth, I have gouge on free. So when I'm in stealth, I'm going to spam cheap shot. And then as soon as I pop out of stealth, I'm going to basically pop gouge straight after the stun. So what this basically does is it stops mages from blinking your stun. And for orcs, it will put them in a gouge just in case that your stun got resisted. So whenever I'm opening against mages or orcs, I always use this trick. I always go for the gouge straight after the cheap shot. The reason why this is so useful is because obviously cheap shot is one of the best openers. One, because of the stun, but... We're not actually benefiting from the stun that much, so you may think, well, why not use a different opener? Fair enough, you might want to, you know, go for ambush instead. But the thing that's so great about cheap shot is it can, you know, generate an extra combo point, and sometimes it can generate free, which is ridiculous because if you put free um, with a gouge, that's four combo points pretty much within like two global, so that's pretty good. You can chain it into a really high DPS eviscerate or a rupture, depending on what you know what you're going for and who you're up against. So I'm going to show you this trick. I'm going to attempt to show it on a, a mage, or I might just like settle for a different mob or like any kind of orc or anything just to show how, what the trick looks like. So I have an orc here I'm going to attempt to open up on. You want to be facing the target to do this trick and then straight into a gouge. As you can see I did get the stun off but four combo points there into an eviscerate and it's probably, you probably won't go down because I'm trying to record at the same time but uh, yeah I think I've actually killed him so. Bob's your uncle. That actually turned out much better than I thought. So the next two tips are going to be entirely focused on optimizing your raid DPS. First thing we're going to talk about is the timing of Adrenaline Rush. If you time Adrenaline Rush perfectly, you will get 8 energy ticks rather than just 7. This means like 8 ticks of 40 energy, so that's obviously pretty good. Um, you may notice I have two bars on my screen right now. One of them is Nug Energy. Nug Energy is the basically the energy time with the 110 number on it. It showed me precisely when my energy comes, you know, basically ticks. You will notice that it goes green. Okay, it goes green now. The second it goes green is basically telling you the perfect time to use Adrenaline Rush. You want to use it less than a second before energy tick in order to get that cheeky extra, you know, energy tick. So, I'll show you it in action right now if I, um, I've come to these mobs that don't die. You know, I will, I'm going to use Adrenaline Rush 
there. I used it, like, some reason the green thing didn't go off, but, like, you basically use it just before an energy tick actually occurs. It's pretty straightforward. So the next thing we need to talk about is Sinister Strike timing, because basically Sinister Strike, because since it uh, is based on weapon damage, it counts as an extra melee hit. So when you use Sinister Strike, you you basically do an extra melee hit. And because you're doing an extra melee hit, it has a chance to proc certain effects. For instance, Sword Spec, it will proc Sword Spec. It will proc Hands of Justice, Thrash Blade, Iron Foe, everything like that. So basically, whenever you get an extra, you know, whenever the, and you get a proc similar to those effects, what happens is the weapon swing timer is totally reset. So what you're effectively doing is you are basically gimping your DPS if you do a sensor strike straight after a weapon swing, because then you're resetting it, right? Sorry, if you use it like ju just before the weapon is about to go off, then you're basically going to reset the weapon swing timer, which means, for instance, if your, you know, your sword is about 2.7 seconds weapon speed, that Basically, it might only go off every three to four seconds because you basically stop the weapon swing from happening. Easy way to get around this is to obviously have a weapon swing time add on, like you can see at the blue bar. What I do, some people use sensor strike straight after it occurs, which is fair enough. What I like to do is I like to do it just before because I feel like there's a little bit of delay of you one pressing a button and latency from you connecting to the server. So I, I literally use it just before the blue bar is full. I feel like this is the best way to do it in, in all honesty, but um, you know, it's up to your preference. So as you can see, I'm just popping it, spamming a sinister strike, I spam it like three times just before the weapon is about to go full. I feel like this is the best thing to do to optimize your DPS. So the next trick we're going to be doing is a distract trick, which effectively stops people from drinking if you use distract in the correct way. Uh, this tip is courtesy of Big Dog, if you want to check out his channel, a link back in the description. So what you're essentially going to do um, obviously I can see this mage, he's drinking, a uh, big uh, shout out to Success from the guild for helping me out with the video as well. So all I'm going to do, he's basically just continuing to drink, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to use Distract behind him. I also have a macro here, um, just ch quickly showing my Distract macro, which basically it says slash use at cursor Distract, which basically means that you don't need to be like green like thing to appear you can just literally press it and it will do it automatically for you so let's let's show this in action if I just pop distract behind him it's gonna force him to turn around and stand up which basically stops him from drinking and it's literally as straightforward as that Bob's your uncle next tip is a very quick one it is a weapon swap macro so you may be thinking well the irritating thing about ambush or any ability fairly similar is that you need to use a dagger and then you know, you're very restricted to what weapons that you can use, but it's very simple. All you have to do is make a ambush da uh, slash equip dagger macro. Okay, I just have this macro, I press it, it's going to automatically equip a dagger, and then I can do a dagger opener if I feel like it. it it's not that difficult. And then my sensor strike macro, which is here, it basically just equips my, you know, my main hand and my off hand. It's pretty straightforward. The next tip I have for you is a sneaky pitpocket macro. So what you can do is actually just put slash cast pitpocket on any of your stealth openers, for instance on an ambush or cheap shot. And what you do, which well, what you probably already do, is you spam the stealth opener macro so that you use it as soon as you're in range. But the thing is, for like a millisecond or more like half a second before you actually are in melee range to do the cheap shot, you're probably going to be in range to do pitpocket because the range on pitpocket is a little bit longer than you know cheap shot. So what will happen is you'll basically do, fit in a pit pocket in your stealth opener, and it kind of like it's it, it, it like lags and glitches a little bit, but you won't see the um, you won't actually see, physically see the loot window either. So sometimes it happens, sometimes it doesn't. Um, but nonetheless, just putting this in your stealth opener, it means that you're going over time. You are going to generate a little bit of extra sneaky money without even you you know even realizing. So I'll show the macro very quickly. It's much easier to pull off with ambush because you know you obviously have to be behind to use ambush. But if you kind of use it before you actually get behind, as you can see, I looted 68 copper there. And um, yeah, it's much easier to do with ambush. But again, like you can pull it off with cheap shots. Most of the time, it doesn't go off with cheap shot, but you know sometimes it does. The next trick I'm going to show you is a group CC trick. So you can use this in PvP. You can use this in PVE. It's very simple, but what I think a lot of people don't realize is how underrated rogue crowd control really is. You can very easily crowd control four different people at once for at least about four seconds. So four people CC'd for at least four seconds is actually pretty good. You know, you can open with sap on one target, 
and then cheap shot onto one target, and then blind onto another target, and then gouge onto a different target. So it's pretty hard to pull off. It's useful in you know both PvP and PvE environments, say for instance you're dealing with a very difficult pull. If I distract this guy here, which is another trick I'm going to talk about, you know, I'm going to sap here and blind into a gouge with the energy. There you go, you know, I've got, I've got four free people, very easily crowd controlled. Say for instance we're taking down one mob as a group, that's going to reduce a massive amount of uh, damage on the tank. We'll probably kill that mob, you know, before these guys break out of their CC. So, the tip basically, in overall, is just to be intelligent with, like, actually spreading your crowd control. You can very easily just bring a one rogue to a group and do some amazing CC, um, you know, for mob pulls and stuff like that. So one of the most dangerous things in a dungeon is a patrolling NPC. Luckily, rogues have a very effective way of dealing with patrolling, uh, you know, mobs. And it's called, uh, basically you can just use distract. What distract will do, obviously, is freeze the mob in place. And you can use it very intelligently to actually literally save a group's life. Say, for instance, if you can see a, a mob that's like... Say, for instance, we're dealing with, like, the group that's here, and, we, and I can physically see the Scarlet Diviner running into the room. What you can do is vanish, and then go and pop distract to basically stop that Scarlet Diviner from running into the room. So let me show you this. So as you can see, imagine, you know, we're dealing with mobs here. I can vanish, quickly pop a distract, and that will stop the mob in its tracks, keep it there for a period of time, wait for us to clear these mobs, and then we can deal with that mob later on. So that's just, it's a really useful trick in Dire Mall North tribute runs, because there's a guard that you have to kind of uh, run around, and you can use distract to freeze them in place, so you have a little bit of extra time to run around them. For our last tip, we're going to talk about the Rupture ability. So, first of all, you can use Rupture very very effectively on bosses like Anixia. Anixia basically obviously goes into his or her flight stage, which means you're pretty much unable to DPS him. However, for some reason, you can actually still do melee hits. If you jump just underneath where Anixia stood, you can continue to do melee hits like Sinister Strike and a few, you know, normal weapon swings. So what I like to do is stack combo points really high, pop Rupture, you know, because dots are very useful at taking down an Ixia during that phase, and uh, that massively increases my DPS, so it is actually pretty useful f to, for you to use Rupture on an Ixia during the air phase, particularly if you're doing 20 man an Ixia, where obviously there's going to be a less Warlocks doing dot DPS. And generally, Rupture is a very useful ability, which I would recommend to use when you're doing 20 man raiding, but also don't neglect to use it when some of your raid members have actually died. And I always also like to use it during certain phases during a boss where I know you're going to get crowd controlled a lot. Uh, for instance, on the last phase of Anixia, you get feared a lot. So sometimes I do like to swap Eviscerate with Rupture, providing there's, you know, I'm not taking up a debuff slot because I'm spending a lot of time actually running away. Okay, what? which means like slice and dice is kind of like less effective because you're pop you're using slice and dice but like half the time you're not actually going to be in melee range to benefit from slice and dice so a rupture can kind of increase your dps because you can continue to do dps while you're not in melee range or while you're running away and while you're in irritating crowd control crowd control effects but anyway guys that is the end of the video there my name is meta goblin and my next video ciao